मुझे दर्द रहेगा बन के दवा तुम सब्र करो वक्ताने दो ठीक है हमजा वो गुड यू नो बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम so the allegation we're going to look at today is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did not know arabic thus his claim to prophethood is false so the way i want to discuss this one was by going on probably the most reliable people aside from prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which were his companions and one of these was mirza bashir ahmed sahab radhiyallahu anhu radhiyallahu anhu uh, not to be confused with the son of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he states that all of the arabic writings of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were in the form of divine revelations with special support from allah and it stated that the um, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said sometimes i write various words and phrases without having any knowledge of their meaning and thereafter i look them up in the dictionary and get to know what they mean though he may not know every word or phrase that's not to say he didn't know arabic for example we all speak english but none of us can claim that we know the meaning of every word in the english language and then following on from this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would send copies of his manuscript to um hazrat aki malvi nuruddin the first khalifa radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and another companion malvi muhammad ahsan sahab and he would say to them make amendments if there is room for improvement so then the first khalifa radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he would return the writings in the same way but malvi muhammad ahsan sahab he would work hard and he would try to make amendments to certain words and then when we do, when we delve deeper into we find that when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says make amendments if there's room for improvement this actually has a underlying subtle intention so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's then reported to have said malvi muhammad ahsan sahab tried to make changes but i know that the word i will uh, what i will have used will be more eloquent and coherent than that of malvi sahab's words and his will be weaker however sometimes i keep his suggested word so that he is not discouraged that all of his pres- uh, that, that all of his presented words were were removed so from this statement mirza bashir ahmed interpreted two key things that the actual intention of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was for members of his jamaat to read and become acquainted with his writings and then second to understand the teachings and the purpose of the jamaat and then some of the um the opponents of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam referring to these narrations i've just mentioned they claim that um from this it shows that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he lacked um divine knowledge of arabic and proof of this is that he used to send arabic books to the companions and scholars for a, for correction but in response to this there's another narration from sirat al mahdi when some people raise allegations uh, a different type of allegation but against the the diet of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam bit random but it's relevant in this situation so some people have object- objected to him i the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam about the intake of high color uh, high ca- high calorie intake foods how these ill f- um how these ill informed people do not know that he has an he's an aged person suffering from various diseases and in spite of all of this he is single handedly engaged in facing the entire world Moreover he is establishing a jamaat with careful attention on each of its individuals he's immersed in the work of refor- reforming the ummah and fighting a different kind of war with every religion and then the key bit now he is busy writing books day and night not only in urdu but also in persian and arabic apart from writing them he sees their copies and proofreads them and also arranges for their publication on his own so again from this we reiterate that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam wrote books in not just arabic but in other languages as well and then so from the words of proof reading what we can actually infer is that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam again he wanted his companions and other scholars to become acquainted with his teachings and this is shown perfectly again through another quote from the same book siratul mahdi he i the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam once said about an arabic book that it should also be shown to malvi nuruddin sahib for proof reading um after another one of the companions and someone asked what is the need for this the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said Malvi Sahib reads my books less frequently um in this way he will be able to read them so again the underlying meaning behind proofreading is for his companions for his people to understand his books and understand his teachings and then just coming on further on to that narration so i'm sure some of us know that khalifa the first khalifa hazrat ki malvi nuruddin razila tala no he was actually a doctor as well and um it just this it just helps to clarify that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't actually need any help in writing arabic books 
he was always eager to spread um, spread all of the also all of the God given knowledge of the Tablik in that regard. But but he was also very old and he was also very busy and he had patients from far and wide and used they who used to comfort him for treatment. So he didn't have that much energy and time to read the books of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why um, specifically the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would send his books to him so that he may benefit from the writings and again also become acquainted with his teachings. If the companions, if we just think of it, if we were at that time, if the companions had the slightest of doubt that some people were writing books for him, I mean, we'd think the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a fraud. Um, we think we wouldn't trust him. We wouldn't have this, the companions of the time wouldn't have that spiritual connection with him and they wouldn't be willing to make the sacrifices that they made then uh, with their life, with their lives, with their wealth, etc. And we still see those sacrifices in this day and age. If for one second we thought that his writings were plagiarized, um, we wouldn't have this level of demo devotion in Jamaat back then and to this day as well. And alongside this, we find that the opponents, they're not consistent in their allegations or the perspective either. Initially, they accused the first Khalifa, Ta'ala, of publishing the books um, of the Prophet of Islam in his own name. And then realizing there was no evidence for this, they, began, they, they, they then began saying that the Prophet of Islam would write the books and then get them corrected by his companions. And when accusations always chop and change, eventually this makes you realize that they are baseless and they're probably invalid, not very reliable. And just coming back to that st statement now, coming towards the end, uh, make amendments if there is room for improvement. We see statements like this in the Holy Quran and in the words of the um, um, of Hazrat Abu Bakr, he once said, "Say it's, he said, if I deviate from the right path, show me the correct way. We know this was obviously never the case, with Hazrat Abu Bakr, but it's a statement of if rather than if um, that was rather than actually happening. This was the case with Prophet Islam asking others to make amendments if there's room for improvement. It doesn't prove he didn't not, that he did not know Arabic, um, and any reasonable per, any reasonable person would understand this. And then last slide now, the best place is always obviously the Quran. Um, and if we go there, we we see from chapter 56, verse 80. None shall touch it except those who are purified, i.e. there's no requirement for a person to speak Arabic or to know Arabic to have deep knowledge of the Holy Quran. It's only that you be spiritually impure and you approach it with the pure intentions um, to understand the Holy Quran. Similarly, there's no prerequisite or evidence to suggest either from the Quran or from anywhere else that the Latter-day Messiah had to know Arabic. So even if the statement was true that the Prophet Islam didn't know Arabic, um, this doesn't negate his claim to prophethood and really the allegation doesn't, it doesn't actually lead to an end point. So even if he didn't know Arabic, it doesn't mean he's false. I.e. if people are waiting for the Isa alayhi salam, he was obviously from the Mosaic dispensation and he didn't know Arabic himself. So just to make the statement in itself doesn't actually, it doesn't lead to an end goal of saying he was a false prophet. It's just, just something out there for the purpose of argument's sake really. Um, and yeah, so that's the end of it. Jazakallah for listening guys. Zakla Hamza, uh, brilliant again as usual. As you know, this is an allegation which is very common, and it's, it's, people are going to continuously say it without any basis, as you, as you said it right at the end, very rightly. Um, so it's good to good to know. So Hamza, if someone did ask you, your as a Muslim or does he even know Arabic? Well, like what would what would you say? A few um, lines. The first thing I'd say is I'd respond and say. Okay, you're waiting for a prophet to come. You're waiting for Hazrat Isa alayhi salam to come. As I mentioned right at the end of the presentation, I said, look, um, he's from the Mosaic dispensation. He knew Hebrew. He didn't know Arabic himself. You're waiting for this person to come. If he didn't know Arabic, he's going to lead the whole Muslim Ummah. How is that going to work? And then most likely they'll, they'll change the subject again and come back on you. But it's, it's the same idea. It doesn't, even if he didn't know Arabic, it doesn't mean he's false, basically. That's the key. I think that's the key thing. Yeah, I think even just if you present any of the books to mm -hmm. anyone, mm. they'll tell you themselves that no no normal person who learned Arabic could write this. Yeah. You know, yeah. with my own eyes, um, how even just the Qasida, you guys mm. know the Qasida, we learn it um, when, we're, when we're young. Just that, even, itself, yeah. the hard words, even when I was in Jama, when we were learning it, you know, every every word we had to look up in the dictionary and each word had like 100 meanings to it. So to be able to choose that word in that moment, you know, only someone who's who's been divinely inspired can can write something like that. Mm -hmm. so obviously, we know, but looking from the outside, it's always important to look from that perspective mm -hmm. and, and ask the question. So that's we need to be ready for both sides.
Um, well, Baris, I don't know, can I just come to you quickly? Um, I know I know people do make this allegation. Um, have you ever heard of it uh, while you were growing up? Uh, not much because this was not our, because it's, it's uh, to discuss this, uh, our opponent should have a depth knowledge about this subject. So they usually go for top three allegations, which are Sadaqat Masih, Maud, Khatma Nabbat, and Wafat Masih. So they never go for that because that contain a depth of knowledge. I think I think also because people they can't contest with it as well because if they don't exactly. have knowledge themselves, um, how can they how can they make the allegation? And that's what happened during the time of Simo they stopped Islam. People thought that they knew Arabic. <laughs> Simo yeah. would quietly listen to them and 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 take it all in, and he would say, "Okay, what does this mean?" Or you've re- you've used this word in the wrong way. So he would teach them himself um, the language. Hazrat Masih Maud wrote uh, the uh, explanation of Surah Fatiha for 70,000 words. And he claimed that if anyone will write like this, or uh, I think half of it, he claimed that he will give 1,000 rupees at that time yeah, yeah, yeah. if yeah. anyone will write that. So this is the knowledge of Hazrat Masih Maud, which was definitely, we can say that revealed by Allah as well. And mm. the main proof of our, of the Arabic um, the Hazrat Masih Maud learned is from Ibrahim Ahmadiyya because first two books which was published and wrote by Hazrat Masih Maud was in pure Arabic that uh, the, what we can say, the Molvis of that time, the high profile Molvis cannot be able to read and understand that Brahina M D in Arabic form. They would they would praise it. They would say it's the best thing. Yeah. Ever. They it's said that it's an yeah. apple of an eye at yeah. that time. Um, GT, alhamdulillah. Um, guys for the contribution as well. Uh...